Hey, I'm Robert. I'm Jason. And today we're here to install the AMD Ryzen Threadripper processor. And like many of you at home, he has also never installed a Threadripper chip. So today we're going to walk him through it step by step. Sounds good. Let's, let's get started. Let's do it. First things first, uh, the Ryzen Threadripper chip, uh, you'll notice that it's installed in an orange uh, carrier frame. That's mm -hmm. what we call it. Okay. The, the carrier frame allows you to slide the CPU into the socket, and we'll get to that. Um, and you'll notice that the triangle in the corner, if you flip the chip over, right. matches up with the triangle on the back of the chip. And I assume we should try to not touch any of the gold things. That would be ideal, yes. Okay. Try not to touch the contacts on the bottom. And you'll also notice, if you flip it back over, okay. the text on top of the chip is also text on top of the carrier frame. So those are both sides facing up. Ah, text okay. up, always. Text. Right. Makes sense, so you can read it. Yep, that's right. And so now you've got that all set up. So the next step is to grab your torque wrench, and that's included with every Ryzen Threadripper chip. Oh, that's great. And uh, what is a torque wrench? The torque wrench secures the screws that hold down the retention bracket at a specific force. Ah, okay. And, and that makes sure that the CPU makes good contact with the socket. Got it. And this comes in the box. That's right, comes in the box. Oh, that's great. So uh, for you at home, don't use a random torque wrench or a random screwdriver that you have sitting around. Please make sure that you use the provided torque wrench. So this is actually adjusted to just the right amount that's right. that you need to tighten down these bolts. Mm -hmm. And you'll see when we screw okay. them in, uh, it'll click when you get to the right force. Oh, okay. So that's pretty easy. that a shot. So uh, to open the socket, You'll notice on the lid itself, it tells you what order the screws go in. And to open it, it's three, then two, then one. Okay, let me give that a shot here. Tight, pretty tight. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how far do I loosen them? So the first screw will sort of pop because it's the one under the most tension. And then the remaining screws will just come right out and you'll be able to lift up the side. Now, ah, there's, there's the, pop. the pop. Do the screws come all the way out? They do not come all the way out. You'll just want to leave them loose but attached to the lid. Got it. Okay, so I don't have to worry about dropping screws or nope. loosening it too much. It's all really easy for me to do. So, that's the last one. Yes, ah. indeed. So, what is this now that's opening up here? So, that's the retention lid and that's what holds everything down. And underneath that, there is a second piece okay. which you can lift up with the blue tabs. Uh -huh. the blue tabs and that snaps down. I see, it kind of clips into place. Mm -hmm. And okay. you'll notice that there's a plastic protection lid that comes with every Ryzen uh -huh. Threadripper motherboard okay. and it just slides right out. The shape looks quite familiar. Mm -hmm. And you'll notice that when you were sliding it out, it fit into the little black rails mm. in that frame. Okay. So now what you want to do Makes is sense. you want to take your Threadripper and replace the lid. And you do that by installing it into the frame and the orange carrier frame will slide right between those black rails. So I'm going nice and slow here so mm -hmm. no part of the processor scratches any part of this Frame. Before we go any further, you'll notice that the triangle on the carrier frame also matched the triangle huh. on the lid. So that's how you ensure the correct orientation right. of the chip. And when you get it all the way in, you just push deeper in the socket and it will click or feel like it's more firmly secured. Okay, and then you can even see here how there's little tabs that that's right. already fit right into notches in this carrier. Exactly right. Okay. When those orange notches are snug inside the dips in the carrier frame, you're good to go. Okay. And then you can just press the chip down into the socket and it will click when it's securely into place. Okay. Ah, Perfect. Two clicks. Okay, that's one right. on each side. That's right. Got it. Now that you have the Ryzen Threadripper chip in the socket, the last step is to close the lid and we'll start tightening down screws. Okay. Now it's important to note that the screws to close go one, then two, then three. Now some users might be inclined to pre-tighten the screws a little bit, but you don't want to do that. You want to screw down each one fully before moving on the next. Ah, uh, okay. So the exact opposite of lug nuts on a car. That's right, that's right. And you'll know that the screw is to the right tension because as you noticed, the top of the wrench just clicked. And that's how you know screw has been tightened down to the desired force. Okay, and I am having to press 
screws just a little to get screw two started. I'm assuming that's, that's right. okay. Yep, that's right. When you screw down the, the first screw, the it pushes the other ones up just a little. So give it a little push to get the screw started. Okay. And the last one will go down nice and easy. And it's really nice to have the uh, the tool here because it it tells you exactly when to stop turning, and, and it's actually quite a bit more force than I would have initially thought. Being very delicate with my expensive purchase, you know, to uh, to have it. So, so it's really great that that's there to make sure that it gets, I assume, fully seated. That's right. A lot of users are probably accustomed to just pulling down a little lever or maybe a frame with a, a lever as well, and that's that's enough force. But this we want more on our socket because it makes sure that all four out of the ninety four pins are making good contact. It's a big chip. We want to make sure the force is distributed evenly across those pins. So getting each screw to the correct force ensures that the chip makes good contact with the socket. Got it. Well, thanks, Robert. Of that course. was a great help, and quite honestly, that was easy. Um, yeah. Much easier than I thought it was going to be. I'm really excited now to go and build my own Threadripper uh, system and really get out there and get using it. Me too. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Hi, this is Jason DeVos, and now that Ryzen 5 is out, I wanted to explore what we could build in a mid-range PC just over $1,000 that doesn't skimp on looks. So I started with a Ryzen 5 1500X. That's a four core, eight thread part with a base of 3.5 and a boost of 3.7 gigahertz. And like all Ryzen processors, it's unlocked for overclock. In addition, the CPU comes with our Wraith Spire CPU cooler, which does an incredible job of keeping the processor nice and cool while running very quiet. I've got 16 gigs of Gale DDR4 Evo X memory. These are RGB LED, and with a compatible motherboard, you can plug them right in and control the color via software. For storage, I splurged a little and went with a Samsung 960 Evo. This is an M.2 drive, and this is great. For people that don't like to wait for things to load, it's definitely worth the extra money. I've chosen for motherboard the ASUS Prime B350 Plus. This is a great motherboard if you're interested in overclocking. And to round it out, I have an XFX Radeon RX 480 GPU and an Enermax 450 watt power supply. I've enclosed it all in this Corsair Crystal 460X RGB case. It has glass front and side panels, plus included RGB LED fans. I think it offers a beautiful, sleek look to this build. To add a little flair, I've also included a Cooler Master Master Keys Pro S keyboard. This is a cool keyboard because it has programmable RGB LEDs and programmable macros. I wanted a beautiful looking PC that had great performance in a mid-range price. You could scale that price back a little bit if you went with a less exciting keyboard and a little less expensive storage solution. But overall, definitely pleased with this.